I'm standing in an area that's been heavily impacted uh, by a high intensity, very severe fire. And so as you look around, I'm standing north of Gatlinburg, Tennessee, in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. I'm at an elevation of about 1,500 feet, and I'm on a south-facing slope right now, but I am down kind of in a draw. As you kind of look around, I'm kind of in a little bit of a, a creek ravine here, which is why you're seeing a little bit different composition right here than what you might see up there. Um, if you direct your attention to my right, hopefully you can see that ridge way over there in the background, and you can see a lot of mortality on that ridge as well. So the fires that went through the Great Smoky Mountains and Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge in 2016, it occurred in late November. Uh, they were in a period of exceptional drought. The leaves had already fallen off the deciduous trees, so they were still up in the tree, some of them downed, real dry, real crispy. And uh, there were uh, some arson that occurred along the chimney tops area. And over a period of days, the fire expanded. And then they unfortunately got hit with a really severe wind event. And so the winds hit as high as 70, 80, 87 miles an hour. And so as the winds moved through, uh, burning leaves and other embers caused all sorts of other fires in this large complex of fires. Uh, the winds and other fires knocked down power lines, which caused further ignitions. And by the time all was said and done, 10,000 acres in the park had burned, about 6,000 acres outside of the park had burned, one of the largest eastern wildfires. And in addition to that, it was one of the deadliest. 14 people lost their lives, another 100 to 200 were injured, and beyond that it destroyed 2,000 structures or more, uh, billions of dollars in damage. So a very severe fire. Um, what we're looking at here today is really just its impact on the ecosystems. And so we're still talking about these oak, pine, heath cover types and how they respond to really severe, almost stand replacing fires like we're seeing here. Now, first off notice, even though this is pretty much a stand replacing fire, there are patches of live trees and I'm even standing underneath some species that really aren't well suited to fire. There's some surviving red maples right here. Again, I think because of our topographic position down in this draw. A lot of the live pines and many of the dead pines you can see right here at this elevation are pitch pines. Um, pitch pine can re-sprout from fire, some of them may be doing that. Uh, it also, its cones can have some level of serotony or they delay opening to release their seeds um, until heat. It doesn't have to be fire, but fire will do it. Heat releases the seeds. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of pitch pine coming back in this particular area. In other areas near here, the species is table mountain pine. And table mountain pine has much more serotonous cones uh, where the cones may stay shut with live seed in them for between five and 25 years. And so basically what happened is the fire went through, caused a lot of the overstory to die, almost all of the overstory to die. That opened the serotonous cones and now they're seeing those areas densely regenerating here in the midst of the fourth growing season following the fires, densely regenerating with young seedlings of table mountain pine in this area, it's pitch pine. The other component of the ecosystem, the oak, you can see a really la large live chestnut oak here above us. Uh, so some of the oak escaped the disturbance. Some of the oaks are re-sprouting in some areas. Honestly, a disturbance this severe like this probably is gonna shift the composition a little bit more towards the pine away from the oak component. But then if you look at the other major component of our cover type here, the heath, if you look right down over here, what you see, and if you look sort of right over there um, to my left, you see uh, a lot of dead sticks. And this right here, this is a dead uh, mountain laurel. Sorry, not mountain laurel. Uh, this is a dead rhododendron, great rhododendron, rhododendron maximum. And so it's barely alive at the top. There's a few live leaves right up there if you look at it. But if you look down at the base of it, it's re-sprouting, okay? Um, I mentioned mountain laurel a moment ago. There's a lot of mountain laurel in some of these areas. And the Park Service has found that about 80% of it is re-sprouting. And so this is a great example of what you would call a resilient ecosystem. This fire came through, these are south facing dry slopes. The winds happened to come from such a direction and the fire, the ignition source came from such a direction that all three of them lined up. So the impact could be as severe as it possibly could be really. These areas hadn't burned in a long time due to fire suppression since the, the park was cordoned off in the mid 1930s. And so lots of fuels. So everything just interacted to create these really severe fires. But what's happening, you can see around me, they're bouncing right back. They're very resilient ecosystems. They're not resistant, they didn't you know, stop this disturbance from occurring, but they allowed it to occur, it had a major impact on structure, but now it's bouncing right back. 
um, in this area down in this particular draw, you're seeing this flush of early successional species. So we have a lot of black locust here that's flushing. Um, I'm seeing a lot of sumac throughout here that underneath these dense pine overstories that would have been here beforehand, you just wouldn't have seen them. There wouldn't have been enough light to support them. So you're getting some different composition in the mid-story, although that may be ephemeral. That may only last for a while. The sumacs will only get 20 feet tall or so. They'll get shaded out as the pine grows back and the oaks grow back. They'll die out. Um, the black locust, it could be 100 or so feet tall. It may last in this ecosystem for quite a while. Uh, it's very shade intolerant. Eventually it'll get shaded out and die, but it may be here for 100 years now, depending on what continues to happen on this site. So sort of really interesting disturbance ecology here. Often these oak pine heath cover types are characterized by not great diversity in the herbaceous strata. Um, so you just don't have many species, real acidic pine litter, um, shade, poor soils. They just don't have much compositional diversity compared to other cover types around here. Uh, with that being said, what they're noticing is now that there's a whole lot of light on the forest floor, they are seeing species in the understory that have never been observed here before. Uh, or that are being now observed in great abundance and in places where you just didn't see them before. So hard to say how long that'll last. It's probably not a permanent effect, but you're at least getting this ephemeral pulse of greater diversity in the herba herbaceous strata. So very interesting disturbance ecology in these oak pine heath forests. And again, fire is going to be a major component of how these ecosystems function and persist on the landscape as it interacts with their silvics, their adaptations that they have to fire.